Welcome to the first devlog video for Deep Space Airships. I'm not sure if making videos like this is a great use of my time, but hopefully it's a better way to communicate than ranting at random users in the Discord. This video contains a tutorial on blueprints, some of my goals for the future, and my reasoning behind both blueprints and those goals. Some of that's probably going to be boring, but I really want to explain the reasoning behind some of my decisions. If you want to skip to more interesting parts, timestamps are in the description. First, I'll talk about the overall state of development going forward. I've said before that I'm probably going to be a bit less active this year, and it looks like that is going to be the case. My plan from now on is to take longer breaks between updates, but really focus on the big and interesting stuff when I do work on those updates. I'll try to release something cool every one to three months, and I might make additional devlog videos, depending on how this one is received. In between, I plan to spend time on some other projects, which I'll try to either release or make separate videos on. I want to stress that a lot of these projects will have a niche appeal and mainly be interesting for other programmers. Some of these are old projects that I want to show off, some are stupid new ideas that I've been sitting on, and at least one is another game. The big features in this update are blueprints and automated building. In my opinion, one of the biggest issues with the game economy is building ships. Both the economy and the game loop look something like this. You farm resources, you build ships, you fight with those ships, which eventually get damaged or destroyed. Over time, I've made adjustments to both farming and fighting, but the biggest issue has always been building. It doesn't matter how easy or hard resources are to get when there's such a significant bottleneck to making use of them. Fighting and destroying ships is fun, but it's very hard to justify that part of the game when construction takes so long in comparison. So here's my solution, the blueprint scanner and the rapid construction device. These tools should seem at least a little bit familiar if you've ever played Factorio. With the blueprint scanner in your hand, you can copy a region of a ship by clicking and dragging. To paste the blueprint somewhere, click again. To reset the scanner, press backspace. In order to actually build these blueprints, you need a rapid construction device, or RCD. This marvel of poor programming is able to grab items and build stuff anywhere on your ship. It uses flux for fuel, which it can also grab anywhere on your ship. Both the blueprint scanner and the RCD are dropped by green bots in Sparrow. Honestly, this is just where I throw new items when I don't want to make a new source for them, so it might change in the future. The adjusted green bot drop table is shown here. Some items are blacklisted from being blueprinted or built with the RCD, either due to technical limitations or concerns about abuse. Those items are displayed here. Blueprints also have some more advanced functionality. When you copy a region, a string will be copied to your clipboard which you can save or share with others. Pressing the R key will open a dialog where you can paste a string to load the corresponding blueprint. The blueprint string contains all the data needed for the blueprint. You can even decode or generate these strings yourself if you want. Check the video's description if you want to read about the format. There are quite a few things users could do with this information, like external editors, utilities to rotate or flip blueprints, libraries to organize blueprints, or Discord bots to render strings posted in chat. Personally, I don't want to do any of that, but I know there are a few skilled programmers in this community who might give it a go. On the test server, there's another type of RCD which doesn't consume fuel. All RCDs in the test server run more slowly, but will run extremely fast if the ship is owned by a patron. Just to be clear, these speed changes only apply to the test server. RCD speed is not affected by patron status in the main server. There were a few performance improvements, bug fixes, and other changes in the update, but you can read the change log if you're interested in those. Instead, I'll go over my plans for the future, starting with a few necessary annoyances. I'm going to continue processing ownership requests for at least a few months. If you lost ownership of a ship due to the locked and stocked update, you can follow the link in the description for instructions on reclaiming ownership. I handle these in batches every Monday. If you make a bad request, you get to retry and wait until the next week. For most other support requests, I'm going to start taking a harder stance and reject them. If you lost access to your account, it's probably your fault. Sorry, but these issues just aren't worth the time it takes to deal with them. Eventually I'll stop handling ownership requests as well, once I feel like I've given you enough time to reach out to me. I also plan to run a series of ban waves on both servers. I'll be scanning activity from the last few months and focusing on users who make obscene or bigoted remarks despite the warnings in chat, users who admit to being too young to play the game, and users who abuse so-called heal bots. I could go into more details, but the longer I think about moderation, the more mad I'm going to get. I'll just save my patience for when users start trying to appeal their bans. I'm also going to do something with these in-game advert billboards. 
In the short term, I'm probably going to remove all the community YouTube promotions. Most of these videos aren't very interesting. I'm going to prioritize advertising the Discord, the Reddit, and this devlog video. In the long term, I might make a page that lets higher tier patrons post adverts and give a few decent content creators who aren't patrons access to that system. Now on to the interesting stuff. The Shield rework is the next big piece of content. Before I explain it, I'm going to explain my goals for future in-ship content. First, it should be solo viable with a teamwork bonus. It should be possible for solo players to use advanced machines. They should just work without any interaction required. However, you should get some bonus if you have extra players to run these machines. For a completely hypothetical example, RC turrets work fine with just one person controlling them from the helm. But what if they could be controlled manually? Manual control could give a bonus to the fire rate of that one turret. Second, there should be no unbounded scaling. It shouldn't be possible for an unlimited number of players to provide an unlimited bonus without building more machines. In our turret example, only one player can control a turret at a time, and it gives a fixed bonus. Finally, these machines should have somewhat engaging gameplay. There should be more to using a machine than just pressing a button. With a turret example, you have to aim and shoot. If you've been following along, you might realize that the current shield boosters fell all of these. Shielding requires additional crew members. In theory, they're bounded by the number of shields you can store, but in practice, if you can get enough shield slaves, you can outheal anything. You just spam click when you get yelled at. These properties make the mechanic boring, unfair, and easy to bot. Going back to that turret example, it might be a bit more than a hypothetical. If people like it, we can consider making those changes in the future, but I'd prefer to add them as part of a more comprehensive rework to turret control. Now I'll talk a little bit about the mechanics I'm considering for the new shield system. I don't have incredibly specific details. All of this is in the concept stage, and it might change significantly, especially the names and the art. Here's my initial idea of how the new shield system would work. It would involve three items. Shield charges act as fuel, shield injectors convert shield charges into usable shield HP, and shield batteries store that shield HP. Crew would be able to interact with the shield injectors to boost their effectiveness somewhat. Shield charges would have a high chance of not being completely consumed, so you could save them and recharge them after the battle. Having thought about this system, it's possible that it's too complicated. It's likely that the injector and battery would be merged into a single machine. I want this system to have depth, but I don't want shields to become too important. Tanky ships should be a valid option, but I don't like the idea of fights turning into a 10 minute battle of attrition. This shield rework is mainly going to be tested in the labs, which will require some upgrades. It should be viable to build ships in the labs. Ideally, large ships similar to those used in the real game. I hope the RCD can be used for this, but farming resources could introduce problems. Maybe players should start with a large supply of materials. I could just give them full battleships to start with, but that limits the types of designs that could be tested. The lab's game mode itself probably also needs some changes. The void orbs are meant to be a kind of pseudo battle royale that can run continuously, but there doesn't seem to be enough interest for it to work very well. It might be best to run the labs at scheduled times and build a simpler game mode. It could be battle royale style, or it could be something else. The final big potential change is loosely based on a suggestion by Admiral IA. This would consolidate all the Freeport safe zones into one, and give players a choice of which zone to teleport to from the safe zone. This might also involve some process to unlock new zones to teleport to. I like the idea of a complex network of zones to travel through, but I don't think it really works that well. The multiple safe zones split up players, and it's just annoying if you want to move from one place to another. A network requires each zone to have multiple exits, which makes them easy to camp. It's also difficult for me to add PvE-only zones when it's so easy to block the limited number of exits. One of the ideas that was brought up in this thread was that zones could have multiple portals that disappear when they get used, and then respawn somewhere else. I think this is a good idea to consider because it makes camping more difficult, but it also makes it more difficult to escape from zones, especially in large groups. One element of the old portal mechanics that I really didn't like was that you were placed in a random position on being teleported to a zone. This could either be really easy or really unfair. One thing I'd like to do with this new system is let players pick where they enter the zone from. One possibility is that zones would keep the gates around the edges and you'd have the option to enter anywhere around the perimeter. But once you make the choice to enter the zone, you'll be forced to navigate towards the middle in order to find a portal and escape. This compromise would let us keep gates in some fashion, but would solve a lot of the issues with them. Anyway, that's probably enough for this video. Goodbye!